Welcome to part two of making a VLOOKUP date picker. Now, if you saw the previous tutorial, I'm going to pick up exactly where we left off in just a moment. But in case you did not see it, this is what we're going to build. So we have a bunch of VLOOKUP functions right here, and we want to be able to search using a date like this. And when no result is found, we get a nice not found message. But when a result is found, we are going to have it returned. And in the first part, I showed you how to make the V lookup down here. So if this is a little bit confusing for you, which is very understandable, then please go ahead and watch that tutorial. I will link to it in the description for this video. But here we are going to make this very interesting thing. So the years are going to update every year so that next year we will have 2023 there. The months, we don't have to worry about them, but the days. Look here, 2019 January, we have 31 days. But how about February? How many days should we have there? We have 28 and no extra spaces at the end. And what about 2020? We have for February 29. And this is what we're going to work on here creating these drop-down menus so that they are dynamic. And go ahead and download this file so you can follow along. Like the video, subscribe, and click the bell icon so you can get all the notifications. The more of you that do that, the more videos I can make. And now let's go ahead and finish this guy up. And we shall unhide the columns. And this is how we build those drop-down menus. And first up, let's go for years. And you'll notice that year is a table, and the other three are not tables. And the beauty of that is so that if I go ahead and add 2023 right here, it will appear right here. But we are not going to be adding anything by hand. No, we are not. Let me add one column here, and let's create year. We want to figure out where the first year should be. Do you want it at 1900, 1950, 2000? What would you like it to be? And that determines the formula that you're going to use. What I want is to start two years ago. So what we're going to do is to use the year function, and then the argument is a date. So let's give it a date. You can give it today if you like, and you'll get the current year for today, which is 2021. Or you can use now, which includes a date and a time. Either way, year is going to give you the year number. And then what you can do is just go minus 2. And you've got 2019. And to get the following years, you don't really need to do anything complex. There's no point in wasting time on that. Equals this guy plus 1. Enter. And how many years would you like? And now when this guy becomes next year, so let's input a date here. A date, how about we go for 2022 and January 1st. Then this updates, and so do all of the other numbers. And that's how it's going to account for next year, next year. So make this guy however you want to make it, and then just add one for as many rows as you would like. And now we could just reference these cells for the data validation menu. But if you wanted to automatically add another year, if you just type it in down here or expand the formula down, then you need a table. So just click in here and hit Control T or go to, let's bring the ribbon back, insert table. And check my table has headers. It's a good idea to have a header always. Hit OK. And now we have a table. And now all we have to do is to go over here where we want the years and hit Alt D L or go to data and data validation right here. On the settings tab under allow, go to a list and in source, it will be blank initially. Just click in here and select all of the cells in the table that you created. 
it'll still look like a normal range reference, not a table reference. But now, so hit OK when you're done. Now we're going to have the initial values. And when we add the new value, there we go. And what if we add that value by just copying this down? So copy it down. It is a formula still, and uh, this guy has still been updated. And we have finished the years. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this guy now. We no longer require this. And let's move 2023 back up and delete that guy. There we go. Now let's go for the month. That one is very easy. We do not need a table. Just type month in one cell and January in the next cell. And let's delete this. So January in one cell. And then copy it down until you have December. And thankfully, that never changes. So all we have to do now is go over here and go Alt D L or data, data validation, list from allow, and in source, we just select this guy and hit enter. And we're good to go with our months. But if we do put something else down here, it is not going to update because it is not a table. That's not going to be a problem for this, but that's the difference between having just regular cells like this or a table like this. But now it is time for the fun one. Days. And the first part is going to be very easy. Just copy down numbers 1 to 31. So 1 and 2 and just copy it down. And yes, I could use sequence 31 for this and copy paste special values, but I always kind of just end up doing it like this for a small list. So enter the first few numbers and just copy it down. So all the way to 31. And you want to have all of the days that you can possibly have. And 31 is the max. And now what we have to do is to figure out, based on the year selection, let's select a year, 2019, and the month selection, which day to return, or how many days to allow to be visible here. So the maximum is 31, and the minimum 28. And we are going to use this guy to get a reference. So we want to make a dynamic range reference that will change based on the year and the month. And uh, let's build that in pieces. So the first thing is to get the date. And if you watch the previous tutorial, you will understand how we're going to do this. And we are going to use the really nice date value function. It's going to convert a date represented as text into an actual date. So all that we have to do now is to build a date from these pieces over here. And the first part is going to be the month. So let's select the cell with the month, and we'll update these references for the ranges a little bit later. But now let's just get this guy working. So date value for the month. Then an ampersand to concatenate the next part. Well, it's going to be a day. But we don't need to select a specific day, because remember, the desired end result is to return the number of days. So I don't really care that much. All I need to do is to figure out which month and year we are dealing with. So I'm going to hard code in 1. And then since we're building a date, let's go for a comma and a space. Then close that up. Now we have a month and a day. But we're going to go ampersand and select the cell with the year. And that is the structured reference for the table. So since the table is named TBL year, that's the name of the table. And year is the name of the column in the table. So year right here for the header. Close that up. And we are going to get a data value, January 1st, 2019. And we can copy it down. We can only copy it down for four here because we only have four years. But the reason that I'm doing that is because it allows us to verify that everything is working exactly how it should. So we can test it for four months and four years. And now that we have an actual date that is for the correct year and the correct month,
we need to figure out how many days there are in a month. And for this, we have a great, great function. Equals EO for end of month. And you can see it returns the serial number of the last day of the month before or after a specified number of months. So we have end of month. What is the date? Well, uh, this guy right here. And how many months do you want to go forward or backward? Zero. Close that guy up. And, well, we get a date. So we can see what the date is if we go here and make it a short date. 131 2019 but let's change it back to general because we do not want a date here we want to know the actual number of days in the month so we use the day function d-a-y and close that guy up at the end and there we go 31 days for january in 2019 and we can copy it down and this allows us to test for February as well. So February 1st, 2020 has 29 days. It looks very simple right now, but let's combine this one and this one. And it will start to look a bit more amazing. So M3 is now that guy. <laughs> and copy it down to make sure that we did everything correctly yes so everything works everything works and now what we're going to do is to use this to figure out how many rows to reference right here and there are many many interesting and fun ways to actually do that we are going to use the indirect function for this one and this note here, final day data validation formula, all that means is that this guy is going to be the final formula that we use within our drop-down menu over here for the day. But these other two were just to help us build this guy right here. So it doesn't really mean anything in the final version. You would go ahead and delete these three columns. Well, let's delete it and get it built. And the first thing I'm going to do is to show you how the indirect function works. Because if you are not used to using this, it's going to look crazy. So let's give it a little more space, go down here, and just make an indirect example. Equals indirect. Now what are we going to do here? We are going to build a range reference. And then we're going to give that range reference to indirect. And then it's going to take it and make an actual usable range reference. So let's say that we want to reference the first two cells right here, N3 to N4. Well, we can build it like this, N3 to N4, hit enter, and there we go, 31 and 29 for N3 and N4. And if you're in a previous version of Excel, it's not going to spill down like this for the indirect function, so it makes it a little bit more difficult to actually test out. But here we can see that it works just fine. And let's say that we don't know if we want it to be N4 or if we want it to be something else. We can concatenate on the number however we want. Let's say I put N3 to N4 like that. It works just fine. Let's say that I want N4 to become N5. There we go, 31, 29, 31. And you may now start to see exactly what we're going to do. We already have this part of the reference because we have all of our days here, J3 to J something. And how many rows do we want to go to? Well, we have a pretty good idea now because we have the number of days in the month. So all we have to do is to use the number of days in the month to get the correct row reference. So let us do that now. Indirect is another one of those functions that seems so basic, but the moment things get really complex, you are very happy it's there. It's really, really powerful. So we want to go, what did we say? J3 to J something. Days in the month. And what do we get? Well, we have one all the way down to 29. That's weird. I put in 31. What happened? Well, we just said go to J3 
and then go all the way down to J31. And J31 will take us to right here. So we have to account for the fact that this does not start in row 1. This starts right here in J3. So we have to offset that reference. And uh, let's make our offset a little bit dynamic. So here we have our reference and N3. And let's add the row from the first row of the day's data set. So row J3. And we can see the first row of the day's data set. So that is going to add 3. But we don't need 3. We only need 2. So then we can subtract 1 from that. Now, why don't we just subtract 2 instead of going for a row? Well, this guy is going to make it a bit more dynamic so that if our data is on a different row, we don't then have to calculate how many rows we have to subtract or not. You just reference the first row of the data set, days, and then subtract 1, and you're good to go. So when I hit Enter now, and we go all the way down, there we go, 31. And now it is time to grab this and create our monster formula. So we paste it over in 3, hit Enter, and I will zoom out here and make it a little bit easier to see. You can see that right now we are referencing the year and the month from this over here. But we want it to reference instead the drop-down menus from here. So we need to update those references for I3. Let's remove that and select the month dropdown. And for table year, there we go, right there. Let's remove that and select year from here. And day can stay the same because this is where we want to get our days from. And this is the days formula that we're building. So let's make sure everything looks good now. And let's put some dollar signs in front of that guy. And some dollar signs there. And some dollar signs there. Hit enter. And everything looks pretty good. So let's go change January to February. And there we go. It is really cool when it comes together. So the final step is to grab your formula, copy that, hit Escape, go over here, and Alt-D-L for data validation, list. And let's grab this. So it's going to be empty by default, right? So you just paste it in, hit OK, and there we go. 28 for 2019. And how about 2020? 29. How about January? Thirty one. It does take a bit of effort to get here, but the final result is really quite nice. And when you combine this with using the VLOOKUP for the dates, it can be really something nice. And you don't just have to use the VLOOKUP here. So remember that you can use any lookup that you want. And if you're in Excel 365 or 2019, you have so many really nice things that you can use here. The dates are really going to be the most complex part of this. But once you have those down and working and verified and tested, make your lookup as crazy and as interesting as you'd like it to be. And I'm going to put a bunch of links to other tutorials I've done that can help you do that in the description for this video. Now that's all for this tutorial. Make sure to like it, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you can get all my new tutorials. The more of you that do that, the more videos I can make.